Get comfy. <laughs> oh my god. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm here with a review of AEW Double or Nothing, which aired just live on pay-per-view tonight. And yes, this is a professional wrestling review. Why? Because I'm a fan. Let's talk about it. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to watch the pre-show match where the best friends became the number one contenders to the World Tag Team Championship. So this is just going to be strictly the main pay-per-view of Double or Nothing. And yes, if you have not seen the pay-per-view yet, this will contain spoilers. You've been warned. So the main show kicks off with the casino ladder match. Nine dudes fighting atop of ladders for one world title shot. And these dudes went out there and killed each other, guys. There were lots of really, really insane bumps all throughout this match. Darby Allen especially took huge, huge bumps. We also got some comedy in this match with freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. Once he makes his entrance, he walks right over to the commentator's table. And he asks them, how do you win this match? Orange Cassidy is a character, man. And of course, you have the huge news of free agent Brian Cage showing up as the final entrant in this match with Taz as his manager. Brian Cage was a freaking beast in this match, man. He was throwing people around like they were absolute garbage, making them look really strong, huh? So yeah, while I enjoyed the match, while it was fun, all the spots were crazy as usual with a multi-man ladder match. As soon as Brian Cage walked out, I knew who the winner was. And sure enough, Brian Cage waltzes up that ladder, grabs that funky little poker chip that was hanging above the ring, and he has earned a future AEW World Championship match on his debut. Impressive. But yeah, like I said, I enjoyed this match overall. Was it my favorite multi-man ladder match I've ever seen? No. My one big problem with this match was the gauntlet style. I just prefer all the guys just being there from the get-go and not having it be like a Royal Rumble style, because what if, like, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky were the first two in the match? What if one of them just climbed up the ladder right at the beginning and then just nixed the opportunity for everybody else? But yeah, despite that fun match to kick off the show, I think it was the right match to kick off the show. Brian Cage was definitely the right person to put over, and he looked like a beast in this match. I can't wait to see what else he does. The second match on the evening, we have MJF taking on Jungle Boy. Now, the commentators really elaborated on the fact that these two have nine years of wrestling experience combined. MJF, I believe they said, had five. Jungle Boy only has four. But despite that, these two put on an excellent match here. Just great back and forth action. Lots of great near falls throughout the match. These two have amazing chemistry together. The selling was on point. The story with Jungle Boy's arm. Oh, man. Jungle Boy is super, super underrated, in my opinion. And MJF, still one of the best heels in the business. There was one spot in this match that really made me cringe, though. Jungle Boy, I believe, hits a reverse Hurricane Rana on MJF on the apron. And when MJF flips back, his head spikes on the apron and he falls right to the floor. I legit thought he was dead. And MJF ends up beating Jungle Boy with a inside cradle and... Both guys looked really, really strong. Uh, Jungle Boy looked really strong in defeat. MJF continues his hot streak. Excellent, excellent match between these two. I'd like to see another match. From then on, we go to the tournament finals to decide the first ever TNT champion as Cody takes on Lance Archer. Cody, of course, has Arn Anderson in his corner. Lance Archer with Jake the Snake Roberts in his corner. And, of course, you have the wild card of Iron Mike Tyson at ringside there to hand over the TNT Championship. But again, beside the point, these two put on, again, a really good match. AEW's undercards are phenomenal, guys. Lance Archer's moveset kind of reminds me of The Undertaker in some odd way. He was doing a lot of the tightrope walking on the old, like the old school, like The Undertaker used to do. Lance Archer was doing a lot of that in this match. He really impressed me. They really made him look good, even in defeat. There was one point where he had Cody in a press slam position. He throws him over the ring post, which has like a little, one of those little cameras on it to record replays. And on the actual replay, you have the camera go back as Cody hits it, but then it goes down and Lance Archer's eyes are just piercing through, looking at the audience. And he's just like, yeah, I want this title. 
There was also a point in the match where Cody Rhodes hits Lance Archer with a DDT right in front of Jake the Snake Roberts, who invented the DDT. I always love when wrestlers steal each other's finishers, or in this case, steal a wrestler's manager's finisher. Point being, it was a neat spot, and Lance Archer then ended up stealing the Spine Buster, which Arn Anderson made famous, so... There you go. One thing I also really got to commend about this match is the progression. It starts off really slow at the Lance Archer pace. Cody ends up making his heroic comeback. He hits, I believe he hits him with one crossroads. And Lance Archer kicks out at one instead of at the normal two for a near fall. I actually really, really like that. It's similar to what WWE is doing with Drew McIntyre right now. Having Drew kick out at one earlier in the match. And then later on, that's when you can get the closer near falls. I actually kind of like that psychology, in all honesty. It doesn't make the characters look overpowered in any sense. It just shows that they can get more tired. And it's a nice nice source of storytelling, I think. But yeah, around the end of the match, both Jake the Snake Roberts and Arn Anderson are sent to the back. Jake the Snake Roberts comes back out with his signature bag with Damian the Snake. Iron Mike Tyson guards the ring from him to make sure he does not get involved. And Cody hits two crossroads in a row on Lance Archer and hits the one, two, three. Cody Rhodes is your first ever TNT champion. Great match. And then you have Penelope Ford versus Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander, I believe, is an extraterrestrial type gimmick from what I gathered. She was booping the crowd as she was going out for her entrance, which I thought was pretty funny. But for the five minutes that these girls got, they killed it. This was a very physical match. Chris Statlander ends up hitting her finisher on Penelope, which I believe the announcer is called the Big Bang Theory. I like that. And then you get the chairman, Sean Spears, versus the natural Dustin Rhodes. All there really is to say is Sean Spears comes out in a suit. He does the Shawn Michaels tricking Montreal in 2005 trick to make like Dustin Rhodes is coming out. Then the music hits a second time. Dustin Rhodes actually does come out. He beats the shit out of Sean Spears for three minutes, hits the final reckoning, and then beats him. Pretty much all there is to the match, unfortunately. Moving on to the no disqualification match for the AEW Women's Championship as Nyla Rose defends against Hikaru Shida. If you want to talk about a physical match, these two girls brought it tonight. Nyla Rose looks absolutely unbeatable. She brings a kendo stick to the ring. Hikaru Shida was unreal in this match. So, so good. And I kind of liked how the ending came. They, so, first of all, they brawl all over the arena. I believe it was Hikaru Shida that went through a poker table, which was at ringside. And they actually used the big old giant poker chips that were on the set and around the set. They were using those as surfaces to beat their opponents on, which is an excellent way of explaining that. But anyway, I liked how the match ended with a weapon shot. We don't necessarily see that a lot. Hikaru Shida nails Nyla Rose with the kendo stick that she brought to the ring. One, two, three. Hikaru Shida is the brand new AEW Women's Champion. I was honestly not expecting a title change this soon, but good for Hikaru Shida because it definitely, definitely impressed me tonight. She was awesome. Moving on now to the AEW World Heavyweight Championship match as the dude, John Moxley, takes on the exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee. These two went out there and freaking killed each other, man. Oh my goodness, this was a physical, physical match. That's honestly one of the things I loved about this match because it did feel very hardcore. But it's also kind of what I hated about this match. Because the last match was billed as being no disqualification and no countouts. And then this match between Moxley and Lee was just billed as being a normal wrestling match. And the referee did absolutely nothing to stop them from doing the things they were doing. I don't know. I'm a stickler. That's just something that kind of bugged me throughout the entire match. Nevertheless, it did not take away from my enjoyment overall. The ending comes. Moxley and Lee are on the ramp. Moxley lifts up Lee for a paradigm shift and they go right through the ramp kind of like Taz and Bam Bam Bigelow did at Living Dangerously 98 go right through the entrance ramp and then Moxley comes up he rises up out of the abyss so to speak Lee comes up right after him and his head is gashed Moxley hits two more paradigm shifts I believe on Lee doesn't pin him he puts Lee in a sleeper hold and Lee passes out and it's a referee stoppage as the ruling. John Moxley retains the AEW World Heavyweight title. This was an incredible match, guys. Probably probably Brody Lee's best match of his entire career. 
in all honesty, John Moxley's best match in a while for sure. I knew these two were capable of reaching this level even back when they were in WWE. These two brought it to a whole nother level. Yeah, can you tell I enjoyed that match a little bit? Speaking of enjoyable matches, then we go to the main event of this show. The first ever Stadium Stampede match with Broken Matt Hardy teaming up with the Elite comprised of Kenny Omega, Hangman, Adam Page, and the Young Bucks going up against the entire inner circle made up of Le Champion, Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, Jake Hager, and Santana Ortiz. Boy, where do I even begin with this one? So the match is taking place in a completely empty football stadium where the Jacksonville Jaguars of the NFL usually play. The inner circle comes out of the tunnels. They're all wearing matching football uniforms. The elite comes out of a separate football tunnel, not in matching football uniforms, oddly enough. But from the get-go, this match was pure fun. There were bits in there that... Towards the beginning, I wasn't necessarily kind of getting behind and getting the joke necessarily. But I think once Hangman Adam Page comes out and starts doing his cowboy shit on a horse, almost trying to kill Sammy Guevara by running him over, it was all uphill from here. One of the Young Bucks does a backflip off of the crossbar at the field goal post onto Jericho and Guevara. Santana and Ortiz with broken Matt Hardy in the pool of reincarnation. Matt Hardy switches between three different gimmicks. Hangman Adam Page and Jake Hager in a bar fight. They are drinking together at first, but then they just start beating the crap out of each other. Kenny Omega eventually comes in and helps out his tag team partner. Matt Jackson, 100 yards worth of suplexes onto Sammy Guevara. He reaches the end zone. It's a touchdown, but then the referee throws a flag for an excessive celebration penalty. Matt Jackson in turn super kicks him. Chris Jericho with a very close near fall on Nick Jackson. Referee Aubrey Edwards counts the two. Chris Jericho pulls out the red flag. He challenges the play. He goes into the replay booth with Aubrey. Aubrey says the call stands. One of the Bucks hits a super kick on Jericho through the kicker's net on the sidelines. And referee Aubrey also says the kick is good. You guys getting where I'm going with this yet? Ending comes with the golf cart chase 2.0. Sammy Guevara runs away from Broken Matt Hardy and Kenny Omega driving a golf cart down the sidelines. Referee is sprinting to catch up with them. Guevara ends up doing a Lambo leap, but not before a new drone appears to distract Sammy long enough for Kenny Omega to hit a one-winged angel off of Sammy Guevara, off of the top of the tunnel, a nasty fall. The Elite wins. Man, was it a lot for me to digest too. And I loved every second of it. Seriously, y'all, from beginning to end, this stadium stampede match, I was laughing my ass off. And I can't remember the last time I did that with a wrestling match. It was so fun. If you somehow have not had a chance to see the stadium stampede match, I recommend going out of your way to check it out right now. My goodness, us wrestling fans have been spoiled with these cinematic matches lately, haven't we? Between WWE and AEW... Over these past couple of months, we have been given some really, really amazing content. And the Stadium Stampede match is no exception. In terms of fun value, I would watch the Stadium Stampede match over any of the other cinematic matches any day of the week. However, in terms of production, I don't think that overall this was the best. In my opinion, the best cinematic production wrestling-wise over these last couple of months has been the Boneyard match from WrestleMania between The Undertaker and AJ Styles. But that is not to discredit this match in any way. Please, go out and check it out if you haven't already. So overall, AEW Double or Nothing was extremely fun to sit through from beginning to end. I think I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 if I had to rank it. Lots of really great matches throughout the night. There were a couple of matches that I felt like could have been saved for Dynamite, the weekly show in all honesty, but... Overall, that didn't really take away from my enjoyment. Both main events are definitely going out of your way to see. The MJF and Jungle Boy match, as I said, was excellent. Cody and Lance Archer was a great psychological match overall. But yeah, just a couple things. I don't think the casino ladder match needed to be gauntlet style. And like I said, there's a couple matches that I feel like could have just been safe for Dynamite and it wouldn't have really changed anything. Clearly, my problems with this thing are very minimal. So... I would definitely recommend supporting AEW. Check out this pay-per-view when you can. It's a great one, guys.
But that is all, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning into the video. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Look forward to more reviews very, very soon. And with all that being said, back talk, commence.